things and, and it really is, you know, making marriages strong and relationships between kids and their parents and extended families and I'm not sure how, I didn't exactly know what to call it. And so I t- was talking to my wife and she said, why not home improvement? I'm like, ding. All right, that's it. Home improvement. And we're going to be sticking in Ephesians chapter 5 for a couple of weeks. Ephesians chapter 5, turn with me if you have it. Ephesians chapter 5, and we, you know, it's talking about really husbands and wives, but the principles and the dynamics that we talk about are good for everybody. These are good for every relationship that we have, and good for you, and we'll talk about that today. I want to read that passage. It starts in verse 21 and goes to 33, and then we'll highlight some of the things in there. Starting in verse 21, it says this, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. I think we should say that all together. You ready? It's a powerful passage. We're just going to start by reading that one verse together. Let's start. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Oh, that is beautiful in the ears of God. That's that's like music. Verse 22, wives, submit to your husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, which is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless." In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. All the guys said amen. Amen. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for, or nourish is the word I'm going to be using later. They care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. There are four key words in this passage that I like to point out, and this morning I'm only want to cover the first one. The four words that we're going to be looking at the next few weeks are this. Submission, respect, love, and nurture. Submission, respect, love, and nurture. I really believe these are principles that God wants to put in our homes, in our lives, that will transform our lives and our families. And so this morning, we're going to do that. this first one. And the first one is submission. It's everyone's favorite word. It really is weird. Now, that this word submission is, is unusual because in our culture, we think of it in a different way. We've twisted the meaning of this word so that it doesn't really mean what the Bible says. In our culture, submission says uncle. I mean, I give up. Submission is a wrestling move. We call it submission. It's a wrestling move that we get you in a position where you can't move. It's dominating someone else, putting them in submission. It's just the opposite in the scripture. Submission is not a domination. It's a point of doing the will of another. It's voluntarily doing the will of another. This morning, we're going to take a deep dive into the word submission. Did you know that there's another word that goes with submission? And in the Bible, and it talks a little bit about it in this, but I'll I'll refer to a few passages And that is the word authority. Whenever there's submission, you're submitting to authority. The authority is simply the exercise of influence or the God-given influence that God has for us. And so so we're submitting to that God-given authority. Jesus was submitted. He was submitted to the Father. It's interesting that he says, I only do what I see the Father doing. I only speak what I hear the Father saying. You remember in the Garden of Gethsemane where he says, not my will, but yours be done. 
And if you look at the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, they're all in submission to one another. I read that passage uh, twice at the beginning, verse 21, because I think it's important. Sometimes we believe that submission is just for women and children because, hey, God says, you know, wives should submit to their husbands. But right before that, it says, submit to one another. There's, there's nothing in, the, in these passages that are just solely for kids or husbands or wives. But there's th- certain things that are focused on for a particular purpose. It's recognizing authority, submission to authority. Jesus recognized that the Father was his authority, that his figure, father figure, he was the authority in his, in his life while he was on earth. And so the Father and the Son and the Spirit all have des- designated roles. They're not the same. Three in one, three persons, one God. Like husband and wife, one person. What? That's what it says right here. The two are one. Three in one. They're different. The Father designs the plan. The Son executes the plan. And the Spirit empowers the plan. And they work in harmony together. Recognizing assigned roles, I believe, is important. Husbands and wives have different roles. Men and women are different. I know this is not politically correct. Men, and I'm speaking on YouTube, so hopefully other people in the world, the, the webverse or whatever that's out there, it will hear this like, we're different. It's okay. God made us different for a purpose. Husbands are different than wives. I'm going to say some general things about husbands and wives, and I know that there's, they're not 100%. I know that there's crossover and there are roles are are kind of flux at many times but generally speaking husbands are to provide protect and initiate that's what a leader does a leader initiates righteousness a leader serves is a servant so if you think wow the god says i'm the head i'm the head of the household that means you're the chief servant do i have any guys saying amen I got some ladies, chief servant. That's what a leader is. Wives are partners in every respect with their husbands, but they focus, they're better or more focused towards nurture, nurturing the family, running the home. And as guys are better at building stuff, women are better at building relationships. And so they have this, we have this unique kind of combination of husbands and wives that complement each other. We're not the same. It's okay. We take on different jobs in the family, but we need to recognize that the calling is for the common good. Husbands and wives have unique responsibilities. In our society, we have some people that are firemen and some people are doctor, some people that are that electricians and builders and some people, I mean, it's just everybody's got a different role. Police officers have a different role. Police officers have a role to uphold the law, to, to serve and protect. It's interesting that, you know, on the sign of a, side of a police car, a lot of them say to serve and protect. That's so biblical. Their, their authority is to uphold law. They're not better than anyone else. And we're not better than them. They just have a different role, and their authority has been given for the betterment of the good. Not everyone's a police officer. All authority is meant to be exercised in the context of service. It's all to serve. In our our culture, we use it as a point of domination. I don't want to be a person with authority. I I don't want to tell people what to do. Good. You shouldn't. That's not what authority is. God wants you to have influence so that you can lift people and serve people. That's what authority is given for. Here's what authority doesn't mean. It doesn't mean I'm in charge and you do what I say. Having godly authority means you get influence to make a difference in people's life. Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. 
So authority and influence, those are synonymous. And the way to get that in your life, the way to have impact is submission. You can't have authority without submission. In fact, you'll only have the authority that, to the level in your life that you're submitted to. You'll only have the authority in your life to the level that you're submitted to authority. You're not submitted to authority, you don't get any. Not godly authority anyway. Do you recognize the authorities that God's put around you in your life? Think about it for a second. Who are the people in our community who God put to serve and to help and to be authorities in our, in our community? Community leaders, whether it's city council or, or school council or the mayor. Maybe it's police officers or national leaders, spiritual leaders, employers. God's given them the ability to have authority influence. Here's the thing, church. We can't pick and choose which ones we're going to be submitted to. We can't pick which authority figures we're going to be submitted to. It's the position, not the person. Well, I don't like that person. I didn't vote for them. I don't have to listen to them. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you're going to recognize that authority has been given for a purpose. And the Apostle Paul writes in the book of Romans, he says, all authority is from God. Honor the king. Pray for those who are over you. Now, he's talking about a Roman government that is antagonistic towards Christians and just a few years earlier had kicked all the Christians out of Rome for a four-year period. They had been gone for four years. Interestingly enough, you know who the, the uh, Caesar, the emperor, you know who the emperor was that allowed the Christians to come back into Rome? Nero. A couple years later, he went nuts. But he's the one who said Christians can come back into Rome. That's the kind of government. It's not a person. It's a position. God says the authority has been given for good. Don't confuse the person with the position. Well, unless the authority figure is asking you to do something that violates God's commands, you submit. You're to obey. Here's what we don't submit to. We don't submit to evil, injustice, abuse, and unrighteousness. Those things that, oppo- that God is opposed to, we don't submit to, but we still, we still submit where we can. I'm supposed to submit to authority, but what if I disagree with that authority? How do I, how do I engage with, with, the, with the people that I'm disagreeing with? Church, become an instrument of change, not a trumpet of complaint. The peanut gallery has a zero batting average. The peanut gallery, the ones that just cast, you know, complaints and is critical on the side. Oh, they should have done that. They're a bunch of losers. That's the peanut gallery. And they don't get anywhere. They don't make any change. They're not effective in any way. So if you want to be an instrument of change, you can't just sit in the seat of the scoffer. Our level of submission to authority figures in our life will determine the level of influence and authority that we exercise. Are we struggling in this? Are we struggling sometimes with authority? Are our kids being rebellious? Maybe. Are we at work and maybe uh, people are talking bad about us at work? Or maybe we feel like we're not getting the the respect that we deserve in our own home from our spouse or kids. If we're not walking in authority, are we understanding authority in our life in the first place? Am I struggling with authority on a personal level? Am I submitted to the authority figures in my life? It was about a dozen years ago um, that we, I'm a part, we're a part of the Foursquare Church. It's a Foursquare denomination. It's a family of churches that's around the globe. And our 
national president, um, his name is, was named at that point, was Glenn Burris, Glenn Burris Jr. And so he, he made a mistake. He did something wrong, and I didn't like it. And so I remember talking with some other pastors about him and how I didn't like the mistake. I didn't bother to call up Glenn or even to pray for him. I just talked about him. Not good. And the Holy Spirit just, you know, twisted me, just convicted me. I'm talking against the person that I'm under their authority. By the way, it's good. To, I, I, it, not every church has to be a part of a denomination. I don't believe that non-denominational or independent churches are wrong. I just appreciate, I really appreciate a denomination because there's accountability. And I can't get too weird without someone noticing and if I start preaching a weird, another message than Jesus, someone will come and talk to me. And they'll, they'll fix me or they'll remove me. And you're thankful for that. Anyway, I'm talking bad about my boss, basically. The, the one who's in really the head servant of our denomination. And God just really messes with me. Like, what are you doing? And I felt like the Holy Spirit prompted me. And he lived at that point in Agua Dulce, right, not too far from us. I invited him to come speak at our church on a Sunday morning. The very guy that I was complaining about to my friends, that I was talking bad about, God says, I want you to bless him. I want you to hear from him. I want you to submit to him. I don't know about you, but a lot of people have trouble with authority figures. Let me ask you a few questions. Do you talk smack about police officers? If you do, you, might, you may have a submission problem. Do you grumble and complain about the mayor, the school board, and the governor? You may have a submission problem. Do you make jokes about the president? You may have a submission problem. Do you struggle to do what your boss is asking you? You may have a submission problem. Are you arguing with your spouse? You definitely have a submission problem. Do you complain nonstop? Do you find yourself questioning the balls and strikes at baseball games? You got issues. You see... Church, God wants you to be a game changer. God wants you to be one who makes a difference in this world. And one of the major ways that he does that is to form in you an understanding of authority. And that authority starts with submission. And God wants you to have influence. He wants you to make a difference. But it's not the American way. Submission is just not the American way. We've got a lot of strengths as a nation. Submission is not one of them. It's not a cultural strength. I want to read to you a story in the Bible. This is Jesus encounters a Roman soldier. His name is it's a centurion. And in Matthew chapter 8, here's what it says, verses 5 and following. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, you want me to come and heal him? The centurion replied, no, oh, I don't deserve you to come under my roof. Just say the word, my servant will be healed. For I may, myself and a man, I'm a man of authority, under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. I tell this one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does that. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I, t I say to you that many will come from the east and the west will take their place at the feast of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown aside. He's talking about the Jews who would not believe in him later. They would reject him. Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, verse 13, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. 
You see, a Roman soldier in that day was not exactly the picture of Christian love. Very abusive. It was an abusive kind of system. And this centurion, although he recognized Jesus, he had some things going for him. He might not have been very polished, but he had something going for him, and he understood authority, submission, and honor. He recognized those things. They were part of the culture. And so when he just, he's, this guy's got authority, I am going to believe what he says, and I'm going to just, it's done. It's a done deal. See, this Roman centurion was surrounded by a culture of honor. Americans don't have a culture of honor. We have a culture of shame. A culture of honor looks for the best in others. A culture of shame looks for faults. We look to criticize. And so as a believer in Jesus, as a follower of Jesus, we're going counterculture on this, guys. We're going against the stream. Jesus wants to, uh, us to adopt a culture of honor, a culture that understands authority and submission. Some years ago, um, we, we put on a parenting class. It was called Growing Kids God's Way. It was a pretty awesome class. 19-week video series. 19 weeks. We think about it now. It's like we can't even fathom anything beyond six weeks. Because our attention span is just so short in our culture. But we had 19 weeks and people went to it. It's amazing. And they were trans- their families were transformed. They were built up. One of the things that they said, you know, they, they taught your, uh, the parents like how to interact with the kids. And teaching the kids how to interact with the parents. And so there are phrases that they told the, the parents to teach to their children. One of the phrases was this. All right, kids, here's what we're going to say. We're going to say it together. What you say, I will obey. Doesn't that sound good? Sounds corny, right? But it's powerful. We did it with our kids, and it worked. What you say, I will obey. That is the very heart of submission. Are you struggling with aspects of submission? Are you struggling with maybe doing the will of the Father? Are you being stubborn about something that you know God's asking you to do? You see, so far, I've just given you information. Now I'm going to ask God to do some transformation. So we're going to ask God to work personally in our lives. Maybe God wants you to forgive someone. You're like, no way. God, hey. That's, the, that's the unsubmission. Unsubmission. That's what that is. I can't forgive them. Maybe God wants you to sow a financial blessing in someone's life. My like, God, you know I'm just barely eking it out. I just finally got some money in my pocket. You want me to give it away? You're arguing with God, really? Or maybe he wants you to step out in faith in something new. You're like, God, I'm just finally, you know, I'm finally comfortable. Everything's going smooth, and you're asking me to change my life. Maybe he's asking you to pray for somebody. Sometimes that's tough because he'll give you insight. Hey, that person needs physical healing. That person needs salvation. Go witness to them. And you're like, I don't know, God. It's those are all struggles with submission because submission requires obedience. What you say, I will obey. Our stubbornness is blocking our blessing. There's a couple of passages in Scripture that are really some of my favorites in the New Testament. And the, the two favorite teachings of Jesus are the Sermon on the Mount, and that's in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's the largest teaching of just Jesus' teaching section in the whole New Testament. The other one of my favorites is Jesus in the Last Supper. 
It's in John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. It's this, a, this whole, this one scene, it's 24 hours. And Jesus spending the last time before he's arrested um, with his disciples, and he's teaching them important things. Right in the middle of that teaching, John chapter 15, verse 7, this is what Jesus says. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. I think it goes on to say that my Father will be glorified. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. You know what this is talking about? It's talking about submission to authority. Submitting, Lord, whatever you say, I'm going to do And if I submit to that authority, I'm going to have authority. I'm going to ask whatever I want, and you're going to do it. What? Did I get a good reading on that? If I'm submitted to what your will is and what your words say to me, if I do what you're asking, you say, then now I'm going to walk. If I'm submitted to your authority, I'm going to have authority. See, my, my... My fear is that our unwillingness to submit is keeping us from becoming the men and women that God wants us to be. And so I want to take a few moments, and we're going to, we're going to do some water baptisms in just a few minutes. <clears throat> Come on. But I want to take a few minutes with you, and I want to pray. Yeah, the baptism people need to leave. Giving them the heads up. Pastor didn't preach long today. I didn't preach it last week. I preached plenty long. I'm making up for it, church. I repent. Here's what I'm asking. Would you come right now? Would you come to the throne with me? And I, physically, I don't know if you can bow, if you don't have to get on your knees, but spiritually, would you would you? prostrate your your heart before God? Would you just maybe close your eyes and take a moment and just come with me to the throne, to the king of all kings? And as the psalmist says, Lord, examine my heart. See if there's anything in me that's not right. So, Lord, we want to come to you and, and honestly And just truthfully say, we've missed it. We've fallen into our cultural habits and our our cultural um, norms where we speak against authority figures. We reject authority. We prefer to live an independent, rebellious existence rather than trusting you with everything. So, Lord, today we just have to come and we say, we're all in. We surrender. We submit. We submit to you. We submit to the plans that you have for our life. Form in us an attitude of submission. Lord, form it in us by your spirit. Only by your spirit can you change us. It's not even knowledge that changes us. It's your spirit that changes us. Form in us a culture of honor. Personally in our lives, in our our homes, in our church, in our community. Lord, I pray that you give us something of a culture of honor where we look for the best, not the worst and hearts of obedience, where we recognize authority and we're quick, quick to obey. Lord, we know that you're building an army. 
You're building an army of believers, sons and daughters, who you want to see do great things. An overcoming army where the gates of hell will not prevail against it, cannot stand against this army. An army that understands submission and humility. And an army that walks in power and authority. Changes. Change our hearts. And as we submit to you, the ultimate authority, God, I pray that you would help us in a godly sense, in the most godly sense, to recognize the authority that you've put in and all around us, whether it's our parents, PTA president, police officers, politicians, those that you design, Lord, to serve us, whether they're doing it right or not, God, I pray that you give us a heart to, of submission. And let that be a powerful light in a dark world. A powerful testimony that wants to see the church as different. The world is looking, and Lord, I help, pray, God, help us be that difference. Start with me. Lord, when we think of just our, our homes, we think of our extended families, our friends, our workplaces, we just know, God, well, we're, a bunch, we're around a bunch of broken people. We can't change them. So, Lord, start with me. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to start with me. Change me. Make me a trophy of grace. Make me formed in the image of your son. Make me a living testimony to love. Just give it up. Lord, we just give it up. I'm going to ask you, church, just put your hands out in front of you. Lord, just open palms. We just give it up. We give it up. It's all yours. Now, would you take a hand and put it over your mouth? Lord, you know that these lips... We transgress, Lord. We just openly, regularly, we just transgress. I pray, God, that you cleanse our lips. Take a coal from the altar. Cleanse our lips. Lord, we pray that every word that we speak would be words of life, not words of death. Words that would encourage, not words that would put down. Words that would lift, not words that would oppress. Words that would affirm, not words that would speak harm. Let every word that comes out of our mouth give grace to those who hear. They give grace. Guard our, put a guard on our lips, Lord. Put a guard on our words. Guard our heart. Now, if you're here today and you're just struggling with this whole idea of submitting, I want to I want to just encourage you. There's a, the ultimate form of submission is accepting the King of Kings as the Lord of your life. And I want to just take a moment right now. If you're here today and you need to just do business with God. You just got to get right with him. You've been running from him. You've been 
bad talking him, <laughs> you've been neglecting him, you've been, he's been wanting you to do stuff, and you've been unsubmitted to him, you say, I'm, I'm done running, I'm done running, I'm going to make him the king. If that's you today, I want you to put your hand up, that's me. I'm done running, Pastor. I really want to serve him. I want to, I want to honor him with my life. Lord, you see us. You see our hearts. You see our hands. And God, we're weak. We need you. So we stand here today. We're going to make a covenant with you. We'll be your people. And you be our God. And we ask that you'd change our life. Transform us from the inside out. Change our, change our future, God. Show us what life's all about. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to have your way with us. Be the guide. Direct us in life. Give us a listening ear, a heart to obey. We love you, Lord. You're so good, God. Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus, be my king. Church, say that with me. Jesus, be my king. That's all it takes to get saved. It's just saying yes, Lord. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen?